This is the easiest review we're ever going to do. Dragon's, Dragon's Crown, Crown gets an E, e for effort. effort. everyone. Just we're kidding. kidding. We're, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We are worms. Person that's not Alice Cooper, all our <laughs> audience. So, anyways, this is Dragon's Crown. Wow, there's a lot of polish to this game. It's a side scrolling fantastical fantasy. Uh, Beat em up. Yeah, and like, it's highly addictive. I would say... It's this, like uh, that Dungeons and Dragons beat em up, but more... Uh, Mis Dungeons and Mysteria? Yeah. The other one? Yeah, but yeah. a lot more... Uh, yeah, I just... What I find with this, it, there's so many nods to Golden Axe, and like, sort of... I think that's from, what, 20 years ago now? Maybe 30 years ago? Wow, that's shocking. But this game, at its best, it's like... There's a lot of like, I think there's multiple endings. There's a lot of routes you can take. You can take on quests. You can play there's like six or seven different characters: dwarves, elves, knights, uh, fighters, sorceress. I think a fighter. Yeah. Like, there's just so many options to this game. Uh, and like, you can customize your character however you want. It's just so much fun. Yeah, you can change the color. When you die, they're supposed to say something. I think that only works online, unfortunately. I'm kind of disappointed. And also, when that. you resurrect characters, they can actually fight with you. Yeah, that's pretty neat, too. There's a lot of ideas to this game. It's fairly unique. There's another game on Steam that's kind of like this, but it's not co op, unfortunately, called Dragon Spear, which uh, is not as high budget as this. Now, this game originally came out on the PS3. And it came out on the Vita. Now, as Vita. you know, or Vita, Vita, tomato, tomato. It, uh, so, unfortunately, because it came out on the PSP, or Vita, I mean, Vita, whatever. Uh, now it's re-released as a Pro Edition. Yeah, the Pro Edition. So now it's like in high def. It's got support for 4K. Like, it's totally remastered. Um, it came out last year. Uh, what else? Newly recorded soundtrack with a live orchestra, like so many options on Voice like, acting -ish. like English and Japanese audio, and all original DLC content. So like, there's a huge reason to get this game, especially on a PS4. Yeah, I mean 4K support. the The coolest thing about this is, like, there's four player co-op. Like, it just harkens back to yesteryear, where like the Graphic it, characters were huge. And you game. just plop quarters in. Well, yeah, I mean, back in the old school days, and like, there's a lot of different moves you can do. You can do slides. Um, we Combos. only played, yeah, I mean, like, there's just, you don't find games like this anymore. And every character actually plays like their own uh, thing. They have their own style, yeah. And uh, I think the game's kind of short. I don't remember. I think I read a while ago. I think it's like nine or ten hours long, but like, it's just so much fun. Like we, it's again one of those games that we didn't really want to stop playing, but at, you know, at the end of the day, we're at we... the end of the day, <laughs> pretty much. So, um, but I mean, really, uh, you could tell a lot of love and care and effort have been put into this game. Yeah, like the every background looks like it's being carefully painted i'm not every sure. character looks like they've been like carefully every painted. everything about this game screams quality uh and the fact that like you almost have to pay 50 dollars brand new uh for a used copy i mean and a brand new copy of the game's like 54 dollars really lets you know like like it's really hard to get a copy of this game too uh, because it's such a cool game. I could have downloaded it from PlayStation Network, but, you know, it's it's right up there with Mario Kart. Like, as soon as someone trades in their copy of Mario Kart, it's going to be gone. Like, it's hard to get a copy of this game because it's so much fun and yeah. you don't find, like, beat-em-ups like this. Anymore. It's a really fun example of, like, coming over to a friend's house, plopping down a bowl of pretzels, crack open a beer, and just play this game, which is why I'm gonna give it a, would it be safe to say a 10 out of 10 for this? I'd say like, just for the fun, you, just for the fun of it, like, no, just for the fun, you know, I would give this like a nine or a 10, or a 10 out of 10. You don't get games like this come along very 
it's, often. Like, I mean, the fact that Richard came out six years ago and they remastered it, like, kudos to Atlas and this Vanillaware is, for developing the game. Like, I thought Vanillaware was the name of the town. Uh, I think Vanillaware was the developer at the beginning. Huh. Or Vanilla Media. But regardless, like, this... I can't praise this game enough. Like, I love the old school arcade brawlers where the characters are huge and, like... And I love myself some cust character customization. Yeah, and, like, this just... It's such an exciting, fun game. You want to keep going and playing and doing more quests. Like, and leveling up your character, too, and it makes a huge difference. And that right there... And is multiple a endings, apparently. I mean, you can... You can choose your own adventures almost because it asks you, like, yeah, like, do you want to give up the scepter or do you want to, like, do this? And it's like, you know, you could choose, go back and, with a different character and just play through the game multiple times. So yeah. there's a lot of replayability in this game. And I think that's actually the biggest uh, thing that makes it, this game get S rank for us. Yeah. Not an E for effort. S rank all the way, baby. S for success. S for... All the fun words start with S. Like sex. <laughs> you got it, dude. <laughs> Alright. Keep on sexing. I got the crown. The devil. Or sorry, the dragon's crown. The scepter. The scepter crown.